Alright, I've watched these girls and guys for the last week. It's three jakes and two hens most of the time. And they have spent literally hours in this hay field. Now this isn't a food plot, this is a wannabe hay field. But that just goes to show you the importance that bugs play in a turkey's life. They're eating insects. They've been eating insects literally for hours. They were out yesterday. I counted a full eight hours of them in the field. Uh, today, it's been a blogged about six hours. But whatever insects are coming into season out there now, they're really enjoying them, and I mean they are working on them. Well, guys, it's late April. In Georgia, it's about... 90 degrees today. It's late April. Uh, turkey season winding down. We've had a lot of interest from people on the turkey decline video. And since it's winding down, we've kind of switched gears. Switching gears, we've been running the sawmill, milling off some wood. Uh, old Red has unfortunately had to have surgery. And the most unfortunate part, the man doing the surgery has no idea what he's doing so I'll keep looking up you youtubers keep them coming I'm putting on a fuel pump uh, and getting injectors tested and whatnot but that's not the point of today's video the point of today's video is to discuss the turkey decline and in discussing the turkey decline well hold that thought for a sec been receiving a lot of commentary and interaction from folks online on turkey season uh, and about this landscape wide turkey decline that we're having. It's not just here in Georgia got a little wind kicking up. It's not just here in Georgia, it's everywhere. Uh, there's a few states and I talked to some folks in Virginia and they rifle hunt in Virginia. They still got good turkey populations. No fire ants. Ah, that matters. But in thinking about this there's probably, it's not probably one factor, it's probably not just predators, it's probably not just what I consider to be over harvesting, it's probably not just habitat mismanagement, it's probably a combination of the three. So it got me thinking, you know, it's one thing to propose to point out problems, it's another thing to come up with solutions. So that's what got me thinking, what can we do to increase our population or at least slow the decline and in thinking about that there's several things off the top of my head that came up uh, the first one of which the best management tool we have trigger control uh, you know I've killed my one turkey for the year I used to kill three every year because that was the limit and I backed off it and I don't know that we don't need to back off it. Georgia, as a matter of fact, is proposing regulations for next year, that's the word on the street, that the season's going to start two weeks later. Uh, it's going to be a two bird limit. It's going to be a one bird a day limit. And I like those things. I kind of don't like being told you have to, and I kind of don't like it being two weeks late because in Georgia, the most fun time of the year is that early season when we still have a little cool weather. Like I said, right now it's April, and <laughs> it's a full 90 degrees out here. All right, so we can start with that. We can control that. Trigger control, we just don't shoot as many. Let the jakes walk. Uh, you know, jakes for jakes, I've always said. So if it's a kid, of course. If it's a first-time hunter, of course. But if it's somebody who's been hunting a while, and just because you hadn't gotten a turkey this year, you decide, well, I'm going to take a jake because he was there. Uh, let's try to let him pass. Alright, next thing we come to, habitat. That'd be number two, habitat management. Habitat is habitat always figures in with lowering populations or gaining populations and it's cyclical depending on how the habitat's manipulated. We can't manipulate the habitat everywhere but there's a lot of people doing a lot of land management and just as a caveat, not that I know anything but I've talked to people who do, um, things like edge feathering. You know, you got a hard edge with a food plot coming into a field and there's no edge on the side. Well, turkeys love to get out there and bug and whatnot, but we've kind of taken away some nesting habitat. Feather that back about 50 or 100 yards so you got 
clump grasses and things that a hen can hide in and that poults can move around in. So that's the thought. Manage habitat. Another thought is this. I love to burn. I burn every year because I know it sets back vegetation. I got into it back when uh, from quail hunting and trying to increase covey size and population. But let's time up the fires. Uh, I say we hold off on growing season burns for a while because hens are nesting right now. I got two in front of the house and y'all saw them earlier with the jakes. They're nesting. The jakes are wasting their time but it's fun to watch them. Turkey TV. Uh, but if I were to burn or to harrow that little food plot that they're coming in and out of, well I've destroyed their nest and she has to nest again. Who knows, next time maybe she let nest in a less favorable position and doesn't raise any poles. So I think that we're burning a lot and that's a good thing, but I think the timing of it that we need to do it a little earlier and that brings me to this with habitat, disturbance. Let's, let's knock down on disturbance. Turkeys, when they're disturbed, people don't realize how far a turkey goes in a day. Turkeys walk miles in a day. All right, a gobbler out looking for a hen, he may go five, six, seven miles. Uh, radio telemetry studies, and supposedly we got some of those coming out soon that's supposed to tell us why we're losing nesting success. But in the meantime, these are just some things I thought about we could do. Manage the habitat, control the trigger, ease off on the disturbance, uh, and I know people love to feed wildlife. I'd, I've done it but let's plant it instead of just pouring it in a pile. Uh, when you have like a feeder, we put out feeders because you're enhancing wildlife, you're trying to get bigger deer and whatnot, but at the same time it concentrates deer there and it concentrates predators there. And turkeys will come to corn. You know what I mean? There's no doubt about it. Turkeys love corn. So, so do coons. And coon loves turkeys as well. So it's not a big deal for him to smell a hen, follow her back to the nest, wipe her out, wipe them out. So think about that, just throwing out ideas that if we're going to feed, let's do it through planting. You know, whether it's some form of food plot or managing your native vegetation, fertilizing it, uh, winter disking, things like that, rather than, I know it's easier, but it's also expensive. When you start putting corn in a feeder, that's a lot of money. You get a lot more bang for your buck if you're doing it naturally and planting it. And the last thing and the last idea I had that I'm just throwing out there. Alright, QDM worked for deer. And this the idea came to me last night. I was talking to a guy online. Um, QDM worked for deer. There's no doubt deer populations are skyrocketing. People get real hyped up about a big deer and I don't want to ruin it where we only shoot three-year-old birds. In that case, you're probably never pulling the trigger because it's hard to kill any bird over two years old. But what can we do for turkeys that was similar to deer? You know, turkey's not the hardest man in the world to kill. And uh, it's like an old farmer told a guy once, they were talking about new camouflage stuff. He said, well, son, I ain't worried about new camouflage. We just about shot them to extinction in bib overalls, which is true. Right? And somebody else said, which I agreed with fully, there's a million videos online of how to kill a turkey, but there's darn few about how to raise turkeys and increase that population so that we're not having a silent spring. Um, I don't have the answers, but I know a lot of people do, so y'all feel free first subscribe uh, and feel free to comment and let's discuss it. I don't know how we institute like a quality turkey management. I don't know how we do that. Um, I don't know how exactly they did it with deer. I know the first thing was they let the young ones walk. You know, so for us, and I deer hunt too of course, but for us, let the jakes walk. If it's a, if you're under 12 or somebody's handicapped or a first time hunter, let them have a jake. But other than that, let's hold off on jakes. Uh, the more jakes we don't shoot, the more adult birds you have. Lower those limits, whether the government says to or not. Uh, it's up to us at the end of the day. We pay the bill through licenses. So if we want to have turkeys, let's do all we can to have it and make it enjoy. I don't know, form turkey QDM groups, clusters, pods, 
uh, discuss it, network it, because this isn't this situation isn't going to go away. We went through this with quail. It's not going away on its own. You're not going. It's not going to be cyclical. And oh, now we've got a hen with 25 poults behind her. Uh, saw that happen with quail. We're talking about if you own, manage, lease 600, 1,000 acres, you can't put a dent in raising or lowering the turkey population. But if you got 10 people together who are controlling 10,000 acres, you can, as long as we get together and stay together. And I don't know, I don't know how you do it. I don't even know if people want to do it. But we need to do something. Those are just some solutions I thought of. If you thought of any more or anything changes, shoot it to me online. Appreciate your comments. Appreciate the interaction. Subscribe, and we'll discuss it. Good luck. Hope you had a great turkey season.